I'm just uh, exceedingly excited by it, have been from the moment I started the project. And Mr. and Mrs. Malva sat, sat down with uh, myself, a couple other people, and said they'd really like to commission a statue on campus. It's an absolute privilege and honor to be able to have someone trust in you and uh, recognize your abilities and uh, confidence in you to allow you to do something like this project. We started kind of brainstorming some ideas and then uh, they brought the artist up. To see all the possibilities and get uh, some inspiration and learn more about uh, St. Norbert. He did some research and decided maybe the conversion was the way to go. I made uh, little maquettes and small scale pieces and came up with an idea based on a story or a narrative from the 12th century. In the story, of course, uh, lightning struck in front of the horse and the horse freaked out. We're not sure if Norbert was actually thrown from the horse. Uh, it might be a legend. My first thinking was it has to have a lot of action and I want him reared up uh, so he's a, a, a very large presence of the sculpture. What we do know is that Norbert had a major conversion. He was wealthy, he, he was uh, dedicated to the church but not really fulfilling his duties. I twisted it as much as I could, I pushed it to the limits. He decided he wanted to commit his life to God and to the church. That's what created that design right off the bat and knowing that there was a connection between the animal and the human. He wanted to somehow really show that Norbert's heart was going toward God. Uh, the, the third figure was an otherworldly figure. It's uh, an angel figure who is the conduit reaching up to God and down to Norbert. And trying to show that Norbert's heart is, uh, is being converted. The concept was to make it large enough to be noticeable and uh, also have a good point of view from all from all sides. And we walked around campus for a long time and it just felt like like the right place. It couldn't be more perfect for the piece or uh, for the exposure that it will get for the, for the college. Once we came to the conclusion that this was going to work, I started the process of enlarging. Basically, it's creating an armature or a substructure uh, that you build that will hold the clay uh, then you can re-sculpt the detail into. And it's a lot of weight of clay, and, and this one it ended up being a, a couple thousand pounds. It uh, challenged me. It, it became difficult working hour after hour after hour on ladders or scaffold because we couldn't get any equipment that would move into it close enough. We cut the clay up which is uh, kind of hard on the artist because that's their baby. And then we make a mold. The molds are in panels of about 24 by 24 sections. And we pour each of those sections with wax. And it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Then it goes into a, a slurry room where they put a coating of slurry. It's colloidal silica and silica sand. And when that's heated and fired, that will make a hard shell for the bronze to be poured into. We melt the wax out of the inside and then fire the shell, melt the bronze down, and then we'll pour that hot bronze into that hot shell. We take that out of, the, out of the box that we pour it in, then knock all that shell off, sandblast it, and then we proceed to put it all back together. We had to cut it into pieces to transport it here. If we don't section it up, then the shipping companies won't, won't take it areas that we had to divide the sections up in order to transport it have to be put back together, uh, welded, and uh, then a chasing process is called metal chasing. You use grinders to get rid of all the weld lines. These guys are professional uh, founders. They're, they're foundry workers. They're just really highly skilled. They put all the original detail back in it that was originally created by me, the artist how much metal to take off and how much to leave and where to leave it, that type of thing. It takes a lot of experience to do it properly. We do a sandblast on it and then we do what's called a patina or patination. So it gives us the nice rich bronze color and then we take a wax brush and wax over the surface of that to seal that finish in. 
this is a, a great opportunity to do something that really talks about the specifics uh, charism of this school. Uh, you know, there's a lot of Catholic colleges and universities, but we're the only Norbertine. If all of us, everyone, uh, needs to convert in one way or another and to live a meaningful life. It looks like it was meant to be there from the very beginning.